You're listening to the Online Marketing Made Easy Podcast, number 111. Welcome to the Online Marketing Made Easy Podcast. Business advice so easy, you'll feel like you're cheating. And now your host, Amy Porterfield. Well, hey there, Amy Porterfield here, and welcome to another episode of the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast. So very thrilled that you've tuned in. Now, today we are talking all things Facebook Live, and I am excited about this. So if you've been following me for a while, you know that I do not love video, and really specifically, I do not love live video because it makes me nervous. There are so many opportunities to mess up and the technology getting wonky and not working out. And it just makes me on edge the whole time. Well, that is until now. You will be very surprised to hear that I actually love Facebook Live. I do. So let's back up a little bit and then I'll tell you why I love it. For those of you who are not familiar with Facebook Live just yet, on your Facebook page and in Facebook groups, most people now have the ability to jump on their mobile phone and instead of posting, let's say an image or some text, you actually will see a little icon that looks like a wireless icon and you can click it and you can broadcast live from, let's say your smartphone or your iPad into your Facebook page or into a Facebook group. And so people are actually seeing you there live. Now, I know some Android people still do not have access. I was with somebody at an event just recently, and she loves using Periscope, and she wants to use Facebook Live so very bad, but she's on an Android, and we tried everything, and she really does not have access yet. But then I've seen other people with Androids that have access. So it's a little bit weird. You want to definitely update all of your settings and update the app on your smartphone and then give it a try. But really specifically, what I want to say is that Facebook Live is definitely a game changer. And I can't believe I'm saying that. And I can't believe I'm saying I actually love it because of all my trepidation with live video. But I do. And here's a few reasons why. One, I am definitely a marketer and I like to be strategic with how I run my business. And when I realized that doing a Facebook live broadcast on my Facebook page was going to get me that much organic reach over a typical post, right away I was sold. Right away I said, okay, me put all your fears away with video, stop being so critical of yourself and look at these numbers. This is what I said to myself. And what I saw was that, let's say a post might get a few thousand people in terms of organic reach But a video, depending on the time of day, I've been playing with that recently, but the video, actually the live video actually would get like a hundred thousand people in organic reach. And then the replay plays on, on your Facebook page. And that would get, let's say 50,000 more people in terms of organic reach. Now that doesn't mean that many people are watching it, but I'm getting out into the news feed far more often and with a bigger reach than I ever have with anything I've ever done on my Facebook page. And just recently I've started to put a bigger focus on coming back to my Facebook page, focusing on the engagement, focusing on the reach. It's something I kind of moved away from as we've been launching our last product and working on our last product. So I've been paying attention to that. And so when I saw the organic reach with Facebook live video, I thought, oh, I've got to do this and I've got to do it consistently. Now, I have a guest on the show today because I had a unique situation where I was at Social Media Marketing World in San Diego a little while back. And the focus of that event, if you were there, you would know this for sure, but the focus of that event was all about Facebook Live. And so I sat in on some sessions all about Facebook Live, and I kind of learned the lay of the land. It's not complicated at all. I promise you, we'll link to a really good article of how to get started with Facebook Live in the show notes. But also, I was in the hallways just kind of chatting and networking with people, and I ran into Kim Garst. Now, I know of Kim Garst, Boom Social, for a long time now, and I know that she does amazing things online. However, I had never met her in person. 
So I stopped to say hello and we started to chat and I said, I think I'm going to start doing Facebook live. And she said, oh girl, you've got to be doing Facebook live. And then she started to tell me of all the success that she's had with live streaming on Periscope and now Facebook. And she was the one who first introduced this whole idea of the organic reach just skyrocketing when you use live video on your page. And she also shared with me some of the revenue boosts that she's been seeing since doing live streaming video. And we're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars in revenue boost from her live streaming experience. And that really piqued my interest. And so I started to research it more and more. And then I said, okay, no more researching, no more thinking about it, no more getting nervous, just do it. So the minute I came back from social media marketing world, I posted on my Facebook page and I said, I'm going live on this date. And let me give you a little hint. What I did is I went live in my own Facebook group first with a small group that I knew they'd be very patient with me and very kind if I messed up. So if you are part of my private Facebook group for my B-School bonus members, then you were a part of this. So thank you. I went into that group and I said, listen, guys, I've never done Facebook live before. I'm a little nervous to do it. And I was wondering if I could experiment with all of you. If I jump on at noon tomorrow, if some of you are in this group at that time, could you jump on with me and let me know if you can hear me okay and let me know about the experience and I want to see what the comments look like and all that good stuff. So I was fully transparent with a really small group I have and they were amazing. And so I got to get the lay of the land before I went live on my Facebook page, which has over 200,000 fans. So I knew I'd have a really big reach right out of the gate. And so I did this and right away, I loved it. I love that the comments aren't flying by you like they are on Periscope. I think Facebook live is easier to use, much easier to use than Periscope. And my audience is on Facebook. So it makes perfect sense for me to focus more on Facebook than Periscope. Now you'll hear from our guest, Kim, that she actually uses both. And she thinks that we all should be using both, or at least most of us should, if we're going to use live streaming. I'm just not there at this point yet, because it's a big hurdle for me to even get on Facebook live regularly. So I know myself, I know my personality. I'm just going to stick with one at this point. And I want to do it at least once a week, if not more. That's my goal right now. I might add to that as I get going. But I wanted to share all of this with you because I really do believe that many of you listening right now should be doing Facebook Live. It's a way to connect with your audience that is off the charts more personal than any post you would ever put on social media. The fact that it's live means you get to invite people into your world. You get to be transparent with them if that's something you want to be. You get to tell them stories, take them behind the scenes, and to share with them tips, strategies, value bombs that you would normally not do in just a static post. And I think that that is what people are looking for. You know, I follow Gary V a lot, and he talks about the power of video. And every time he was talking about video, I would just almost want to hide under my desk. Like, yeah, I know, Gary, I know, but I'm just not there yet. I'm not ready. And so I finally just had to take the leap and do it, even though I was nervous to do it. And I guess that's my message for all of you before we bring on Kim. And that is that even if you're nervous to do live streaming video, even if you feel like it's not really your thing, even if you feel like you're going to mess up, let's just experiment and do it anyway just to see what you think about it. Because as I mentioned, I love it. And I'm the last person that I thought would be saying, I love live streaming video on Facebook. That's not really normal for me. So I just want to encourage you in the next, let's say seven days to do your first Facebook live video. And we're going to talk to Kim about the ins and outs and the pros and cons and all that good stuff around live streaming video. And specifically, I've drilled down on some questions for her around Facebook live video, specifically what to post above the video before you go live. Should you tell people that you're going live a day before what to change your post to once it goes into the replay, all that kind of stuff that we specifically want to know before we jump on live. So we definitely are going to attack all of that in this interview. And then specifically, Kim's going to talk a lot about the value of live video 
and why it's just so important. So I think you're going to find a lot of value in this interview here. I can't wait to jump in, but I first wanted to give you a little insight about what Facebook Live has looked for me over the last month and what I'm going to do in about a month from now is I'm going to come out with a podcast episode that reviews my recent launch. So as you guys probably know, I launched my brand new course, Courses That Convert. At the time that I'm recording this, it's actually not even open. We'll maybe open it up again a little bit later. But I did this entire launch, the biggest launch I've ever done to date. And we used Facebook Live a lot during the launch. So when I do my launch and review in about a month from now, in a specific episode all about the launch, I'm going to share with you how we use Facebook Live in a launch and how we turned our Facebook Live videos into ads and how we generated $8,000 with one ad that cost us $160. It's a little teaser for you. So I'll be sharing how we use Facebook Live and turn them into ads and what that looked like and how we did it and all that good stuff in an upcoming episode. But I'm not ready to reveal all of that just yet because I've got to pull all my information together before I do a launch and review episode. Okay, so I teased you enough, but I just wanted to set the stage so you'll be looking forward to that episode coming soon. Before we dive in, this episode is sponsored by FreshBooks. Now, I absolutely love sharing knowledge about how to grow your business, but having the right tools in place to manage your growth is also key which is why you need to know about FreshBooks if you are currently a freelancer, a coach, or a consultant. Now, FreshBooks is cloud accounting software helping over 5 million people feel less stressed when dealing with their admin and paperwork for their small businesses. You can use FreshBooks for invoicing, late payment reminders. You can get project deposits up front with FreshBooks, and they will track your expenses. So if you go into a restaurant, use your business debit, you'll see it magically appear in your FreshBooks transactions right away, which is pretty cool, right? And that's only a tiny fraction of what FreshBooks can do for you. So to experience the full power of FreshBooks, totally free for 30 days, go to freshbooks.com forward slash Amy, and then enter Amy in the how did you hear about us section? Simple as that. All right, let's go ahead and jump in. Well, hey there, Kim. Thank you so much for being with me here today. I truly appreciate it. I am super excited to be here, Amy. Thank you so much for inviting me. Yes. And as I said in the intro, you and I had this great, really quick (laughs) chat at Social Media Marketing World, and I really, truly believe that you changed things dramatically for me in terms of my willingness and confidence in using live streaming video. So first of all, I just got to give you a big thank you for that because it's only been a few short weeks, but I've seen a huge difference in so many different areas. You don't know how excited I am to hear that because (laughs) I'm constantly telling anyone who will listen to me how powerful live video is. So I'm so excited that I can inspire you and and hopefully get you to a place where you can leverage it because you will be, and I know, well, I've already seen you are a natural Mm. when it comes to actually connecting with people, whether it's not just through your voice, but also through that visual component of having the live video piece and play. I don't know if other people will probably totally get this when I say this, but you have such an amazing voice. It's so sweet. And so, you know, I just feel like every time I hear it, I'm going to learn something amazing. (laughs) So I don't know what it is about your voice, but, you know, and then you tie in the visual components to go with it, which you're beautiful. You are just going to do amazing things with live video. Coming from you, that means so much. So thank you very, very much for saying that gives me a little extra boost of confidence because as you know, I'm not completely comfortable in doing live video. I'm doing it because I think it's the right thing to do for my business. And I love the way I'm able to connect but I'm never really comfortable with that, but we'll get back to it for sure. Because I know you have some tips and tricks probably to, to help those that are feeling a little bit nervous to do it first for those that do not yet know you. And there's going to be a few on here, but most people listening, I think know your content well, but those who don't tell us a little bit about you and your business. Well, I am what I call a, you know, everybody has to, feels like they have to have a, some sort of a title. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, so what, uh, what is it that I do and what is my specialty or what, uh, what do I, you know, really care about? And two things, honestly, as it relates to, you know, letting people know who I am and what I am passionate about, I really care about 
helping people monetize social media, creating more sales, getting that true ROI, which is elusive for a lot of business owners. I'm really passionate about teaching strategies that actually create monetization (laughs) of, of a business. And then I'm also really, really passionate about shortening people's learning curves because that is such a, a huge component. When I started my business 20 plus years ago, there was a I, one, I didn't know anything. I, I'm totally self-taught. But the differences between my businesses, you know, in the early days and now is there's so much stuff, you know, there's so many components of having an online business and being successful. And then you layer that whole social piece on top of it. And it can be really either nerve wracking and, you know, pull your hair out or, hey, that's just too much. I can't do it. So I like to kind of like skinny it up and try to help people shorten that learning curve to actually get a true result. Which is so refreshing because I think most of our students are looking for the fastest way to get from A to B with really, truly understanding it and getting the support they need to get there. And I think you definitely offer that. If you haven't all checked out Kim's content just in general, even if you just jump on her Facebook page, tell me the URL for your Facebook page. It's actually facebook.com forward slash Kim Garst Boom Social. So we basically branded both my personal brand and the business because I had already had a personal brand when we launched Boom Social. So we were trying to pull in both of those components. So it's Kim Garst Boom Social. Perfect. And I'll link to it in the show notes because you are constantly doing live video and you have the most amazing engagement on your Facebook page. And Every time I talk about engagement, I'm always telling people to check out your Facebook page. I saw that recently you updated a freebie all about how to get more free organic engagement on your Facebook page, which is a hot topic for sure. It's such a hot topic. And you know, it's been a hot topic. I guess about two years ago when Facebook started curtailing Facebook reach, I wrote a blog post. It was like 17 ways, you know, to kind of jumpstart your your reach or your, at the time, likes, comments, and shares. And of course, in that time, Facebook has continued to curtail even more the reach that we get on our Facebook fan pages, as you know. Yeah. And I recently updated it based on a lot of testing. I'm constantly testing to see, okay, what can you do to kind of you hate to say game the system because that's not really what I'm trying to do. I'm more about trying to level the playing field for the business owner because Facebook is saying, hey, I want you to pay to play. I'm all about saying, hey, a business owner, entrepreneur, you can still get free reach and these are the ways you can do it. And so that's kind of the strategy behind or the thought process behind the guide that I have, 27 ways to get more Facebook reach. A lot of that revolves around video. You know, there's several tips in there that are structured around different types of video and how you can leverage them to get, you know, more free reach. Which is a perfect segue into what we want to talk about today, specifically Facebook Live. But before we get there, I want to just talk about live streaming video in general. So you have been on Periscope for about a year now, right? Yes, I got started shortly after Periscope launch. I was actually at Social Media Marketing World last year when the app kind of launched and kind of put Meerkat on the back burner (laughs) for Meerkat. And I literally did my first Periscope with Donna Moritz at Social Media Marketing World last year. And it took me about a month or a little more because I'm very similar to you in that I don't really care to get in front of the camera. I don't, I hate my photo taken, you know, all of those things of that fear factor kind of thing. Or for me, it was more about the perfectionist side of it. So how do I, knowing my, my own history, my team will tell you like video is my elephant. It was like a major problem for me. And, and video days, they hated them because they knew it was going to be a long day. Yes. (laughs) So You know, the thought of a year ago, if you'd have told me that I would be sitting down in front of uh, the camera, you know, even the phone camera every day and sharing content, I would have laughed. I would have said, there's just no way I'm going to do that. So it was a bit of a hurdle. But honestly, when I saw the connection, that was really what got me. When I saw the numbers from a business standpoint, I'm like, wow, 
you know what we go through, Amy, to get, you know, people on a webinar. Uh, Yes. And when you can sit down with your phone and hit the start broadcast button and have more people than you can get on a live webinar at a moment's notice with no prep, no slides, no this, no, you know, the the maraud of things that we do to, to broadcast or to put on a webinar, I was like, oh my goodness, how's this possible? So that was my first hook was seeing the business application of getting in front of an audience at a moment's notice. Right. And then the thing that really, really hooked me though was the people that I could connect and engage in real time answer questions in real time, build relationships almost in real time, simply because you see a lot of the same people over and over and you start to connect with them on other social platforms. You start to engage with them on other social platforms. And that no like, and trust factor just is super accelerated. It is, it's just incredible. I haven't found another median in the social space to connect with people quicker and more intimately than live video. Okay. So that leads me to the other thing that keeps coming up with my students when they ask me about live streaming and how professional do you need to be and how good does it need to look? And I've noticed that, you know, it really runs the gamut. So if I were to set up something to broadcast live, when I'm recording a podcast episode, you probably get to see behind the scenes that doesn't always look that pretty, but I'm, I'm thinking that people kind of like that. People love that. And, you know, to go back to my perfectionism, uh, when I first started, I thought everything had to be like super awesome. You know, the sound had to be good and the, and the lighting had to be awesome. And all of these things that we think of when we think about presenting ourselves professionally in a video format. And what I found was that nothing ever goes the way that you think it will in a live stream. It just doesn't. <laughs> Amen. You know, your light falls over, your phone flips, your, you know, a ton of things actually go wrong. And there would have been a time when that would have just like totally freaked me out when, you know, I'm like, that's not perfect. Oh my goodness, that's not perfect. But what I found immediately was that people actually love that. Love they it. love it when there's that that realness, that rawness where, oh, well, if, if Kim's not freaking out because she dropped her phone or the light fell over on her head, which has happened. Yes, it did. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's And so it, I think that that ability to just show up and, and let people know that things behind the scenes in a business are not perfect. And we put on this persona for the most part. We want things to be perfect. You know, we design a great website and, you know, if we're doing front facing videos, sales videos, whatever, you know, we put on the best face we can, right? Yeah. But I think that the reason that live video is so impactful, and, and again, this is my opinion and what I've seen through my experiences, my personal experiences, and then watching other people is that people are so attracted to people who are not just real, but people that are relatable. Yes. In other words, they can see themselves having that issue or, or wow, I can, okay, that's she, that happened to her. Okay. I can do this, you know? So that relatability and the rawness of just being okay with the imperfections of life and business is what attracts people. They love it. I totally agree with you. One of the gals in one of my private Facebook groups did her first Facebook live and she did it in her kitchen because she teaches people how to cook healthfully. And after she did it, she said, oh my gosh, my counters were a mess and I didn't even know it. My purse is open and you could see everything in it, dishes in the sink. And she said, I still did it. And I feel like most of us just need to do it and don't worry about all of that stuff you'll get better and better. Another gal in my group said, I did it. And I hated how my mouth looked like I did this funny thing with my mouth. When the minute the video turned on one, I think we are our worst critics for sure. But would you just agree that the more you do it, just the better you get? I mean, just like anything in life, right? Oh, absolutely. And you know, one of the side benefits for me is my brain seemed to always move faster or my mouth always move faster than my brain or something, you know, so I would get tongue tied sometimes and you know, you'd forget that word that you were trying to say. And that would drive me crazy. And plus, you know, as the normal flow of the way you speak, you tend to insert those words like, um, (laughs) and like, and you know, all those little interjection words 
And I would edit a video to death to Ugh. try to get out all of those words, those little right. imperfections in the normal course of saying things. What I have found by simply getting on Periscope every day for the past, well, roughly every day for the past year is that my ability to articulate has just gone sky high compared to where it was. And the similarly to when we speak, and you can probably relate to this as well as others that are listening who have had the opportunity to speak in front of an audience, you have that fear factor. You know, there was never a time when I was not nervous before I had to get on stage. Now I don't really have that problem anymore. And I really attribute that to the fact that I get out there every day and I don't get wrapped up around the imperfections anymore. In fact, I just poke fun at myself. You know, if something (laughs) happens, it's not perfect. Like this morning, I couldn't get my tongue straight to save my soul. (laughs) And I just, you know, there would have been a time when pull the cover over my head and just, just give up, you know, but it's just really, really helped me get to a place where I feel like my skill set has just really increased. And the confidence that I have to speak has really increased. I think that's a huge plus with all of us growing our businesses that if you do more live streaming video, just as Kim is saying, things start to get easier and the things that bothered you so much kind of just go away. So I definitely don't like seeing myself on video. I'm nervous the whole time, but I have to say that I have loved that I took the leap and I'm doing live video now. And there's this confidence that's coming with it. And I started a Google doc of all these different ideas of things that I can talk about. So that creativity starts to flow when you realize, wait a second, I can do this pretty consistently. And I have to say the organic reach with these videos has just kind of blown my mind. So When Kim and I first talked, when she talked about the reach and what you can do in terms of sales, once you've been doing it for a while and you've grown this following, it's definitely going to affect your bottom line. And my ears perked up like, wait a second, two things that I'm really curious about in terms of how to optimize that inside my business. So there's so many perks, but what I'd love to do, Kim, if you're cool with it, is I want to zero in on Facebook live because you definitely are an expert in that area. And even just a quick conversation with you made me feel better in terms of getting started. And now that I've been doing it for about, I don't know, two, three weeks, I have some specific questions that I think my listeners will have as well when they get started. And I wondered if I could just kind of do a lightning round with you. Let's do it. Okay. So the first question I have is Periscope and Facebook live feel different to me in terms of how to get started. Like when you press broadcast, Periscope feels different than Facebook live. And I'm curious with Facebook live, when the video comes on, one tip you did give me is you said I should start right away. Hi, I'm Amy Porterfield and just go right into the content. Did I get that right? Yes, absolutely. And you are so right that the community even, and and the way people engage with the content is so different on Periscope and Facebook. So on Periscope, you know, when people follow you, you get a notification on your phone and you can tune into that person if you so choose. Same on Facebook. You know, if you've subscribed to their live video streams, you'll get a notification, but it doesn't pop up on your phone unless you have your notifications turned on. So the Facebook crowd is slightly different than the Periscope. Like Periscope is more kind of, it's so funny because Facebook is kind of friends and family feel, you would think. That's the way I've always thought of it. But Periscope, from a live video standpoint, is very much kind of like a friends and family atmosphere. There's like, you know, there's kind of a chatty thing going on on the front side. I welcome everybody and I can, you know, call people out and, oh, where where in the world are you and that kind of stuff. So I have what I call housekeeping things on the front side of my Periscopes that totally work. If I was to do that same thing on Facebook Live, though, I don't think it translates as well. In fact, I know it doesn't because I've tried it. And with Facebook, yes, you need to get started and, you know, introduce yourself, tell people why they should be there and what they're going to, you know, what's in it for them. And then just get started. Now, your audience will slowly continue to build out. It takes a little bit longer for people to jump onto Facebook Live, in my experience, than it does on Periscope. Your numbers escalate pretty quickly on Periscope. And again, on Facebook Live, it seems to take a little bit of time. Yes. And that's one of the reasons I think that Facebook is giving so much push to AKA reach to Facebook live, you know, people who are creating Facebook live content, because there is that, 
you know, a little bit of lag. They're trying to get that content out into your fans' newsfeed. Please listen to what I just said <laughs> because it's important that you guys know that, that, wow, Facebook Live is getting 10 times the reach of the regular content on Facebook right now. Okay. That's huge. That is that's definitely huge. huge. So you're saying that if I do Facebook Live videos on my Facebook page, that's getting pushed out 10 times more than if I post an image with a link to a blog post or an image that has a quote on it or whatever that might be. Absolutely. And just to kind of give you some rough numbers, I did a Facebook Live this morning and there was approximately, according to my to my numbers, there was approximately 250 people live. And they, you know, for the most part, that number stayed pretty even throughout the course of that Facebook Live session. But these are my numbers as of right now. And again, I'm, for the most part, just trying to look at the numbers, how many people were physically live on my session. Yeah. So 250 people roughly, but the reach that I received was over 100,000. Wow. <laughs> over 100,000 people. And then 2.7K in views. But views, again, is one of those oblique things that I don't really... But but the reach is pretty amazing. That means that Facebook was pushing that content out to my fan base. I mean, at a really rapid clip for a hundred thousand people to to have been you know AKA reached in that short of a time. And Literally, by reach, that means that your video got pushed out into their newsfeed. Correct. Gotcha. And. With Facebook Live, one of the things that I think is very valuable about it is that they do give you some viewing statistics right away and then beyond. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yes, and that is really neat. Facebook will give us some core information as it relates to like live peak viewers, you know, how many you had on at the peak of that particular live broadcast. They will give you the minutes viewed. You know, again, that's a cumulative number unique viewers. So for example, on the same broadcast that I have been referencing, there was 2,612 as of right now, unique viewers to this video. Now you got to keep in mind that that's people who may see it in their news feeds for three seconds. So that is what it is. Right. Video views as well. And then how many people actually watch it for longer than 10 seconds? That's important. Okay. So, and you can get that number once your video goes live after the video is done, after you finish broadcasting right away, you can get into that video and see all those statistics and see them climb. And that's what I love, Kim. And that's where you really piqued my interest when we first chatted is you said that the replay is just as valuable, if not more than even the live broadcast. Well, the neat part about reach, and a lot of people don't truly understand this is if we can get more reach across the board for our fan page, then it's not just that particular video or that particular yes. piece of content got a bunch of reach. It's about getting the rest of our content back into the news feed as well. So the more reach you have across the board, the more opportunity you have for all of your content to get back into your fans' news feed. That's the big picture. So the neat part about any kind of viral content, and in this particular case, I count Facebook Live videos as viral content simply because Facebook is, one, giving us more reach while we're live, and it's something that continues to live on. So it will continue to build your insights and your reach out. So it's a gift that keeps on giving, essentially. Yes, and helps not just that video, but all the other content you're doing. So I'm yes. already seeing a bigger reach on my Facebook page just by adding, you know, four or five videos to the mix already. So I definitely see it living on. So when somebody gets live on Facebook and the video starts, do you suggest that we have like a little bit of a canned who we are that we say at the beginning of each video? Cause I wasn't doing that at first. Cause I thought, well, these are my Facebook fans that I'm broadcasting to. However, I'm guessing that it's probably important to say, my name is Amy Porterfield. This is what I do. I absolutely think you need to do that. I share that routinely, even on Periscope. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Kim Garst because there are going to be people. I mean, even the people who are technically your fans, they may share it. In fact, you should encourage them to share it so that you get into other people's communities as well. So, you know, you can't just assume that people know who you are. So I do encourage people to have an intro ready. Not only, hey, this is who I am, but how you serve. 
and maybe build a little bit of value from the standpoint of why should I even be listening to this particular AKA expert, right? Yes. Because you, you know, there's an expert on every corner, depending on what area of expertise you have. And you want to make yourself stand out in some way. So sharing, you know, who you are, how you serve and building out a little bit of social proof is important, I think, so that people know, wow, this person, I really need to pay attention to this person because, you know, they just said that they are a best-selling author or they just said that, you know, whatever it is. Right. So express a little bit of, I hate tooting my own horn, but in this case, it's important. I think so too. Share something about yourself that lends some credibility to who you are as an expert. Okay, cool. Then I'm going to start doing that for sure. And here's a question I know I keep thinking of, and I know there's probably not a right or wrong answer, but I wish there was length. Talk to me about the length of these Facebook live videos. And is there an optimal length to get more people to watch it all the way through or anything about that? Well, I think there's two, to your point, there's not a right or wrong answer, but I'll give a couple of scenarios and let people decide which, you know, one they think holds the most value for where they are and more specifically for the strategy that they employ. Okay. So for example, you know, I've said this several times, make sure that you have a strategy for every one of your broadcast, you know, whatever it is, if you, if your strategy is to drive people to your blog post, if your strategy is to sell something, if your strategy is to get people to opt into your email list, you know, whatever that strategy is. But one thing that I've done, and I think this would be a great strategy for for you, uh, Amy, because I know you do a lot of webinars. Um, I actually had a session with a client a couple of months ago where I helped them define their strategy for live video. And one of the strategies that I gave was to leverage, whether it's Facebook Live or Periscope or any of the live applications that are out there now, to leverage that community that they've built on Periscope or on Facebook and jump on in advance of their webinar and let people know, listen, I'm going, I'm getting ready to do this webinar. It's going to be about this. It's going to solve this problem. And guys, I'm giving away a checklist that's going to help you save tons of time. But you have to join me over on the webinar and you leave a link to let people join you. It's amazing. It's like their their numbers are like 95 plus percent on the conversion of the numbers. So those wow. numbers, those people are following them from Facebook Live to Zoom. That's where they're, well, that's the platform they're using because they want that freebie one. And guess what? When they get there, they have to opt in because you, you're you sending them to Zoom and you'll have a link that says, hey, go grab it because we're going to be talking about this and you're going to want to be you're going to want to add your notes to that. You know, you're going to want to print it off. You're going to be able to see it in front of you. So people opt in and now you are building your list. So that's kind of a twofold strategy. Yes. Or it's <laughs> and then the other thing that I think people need to really understand is how Facebook is giving reach to Facebook Live. So you are getting a bonus from a reach standpoint while you are live. So once you're no longer live, Facebook turns off that push that they've been giving you. Okay. Now that doesn't mean you're not going to still get the organic reach that just would come normally by the additional added reach. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. But they're giving you free reach. So if you're jumping on Facebook live and you're only on for two hot minutes, you know, like to use my first strategy, you know, you get on and you're just using it basically as a mini opportunity to drive traffic to something else which means you're not like delivering a ton of content. You're just sharing, hey, I'm going to be over there. Come join me kind of thing. That's not going to get you a bunch of free reach. But if you're like me, like this morning, for example, when I did a Facebook Live and I was on roughly 25 minutes, then Facebook was pushing a ton of reach my way. And there was a lot more value for me time-wise because of the time that I spent on Facebook Live. So another question I had for you was about what to post before you go live. So you get to type in something before you actually hit broadcast. And the next question is after you broadcast, what are some things that you should do to enhance that post? Oh, really great question. So the first question, as it relates to what to type in, I am a big proponent of using that space kind of like a headline. 
You know, what's going to grab people's attention? So you can treat it kind of like a blog post, or I think it needs to be a little bit more than just a headline. And you can actually edit this, which is beautiful. You can't do that on Periscope, but on Facebook Live, you can. So if you type something in, you know, and you lo and behold, wow, I've got a spelling error in that. I need to go back. You can actually do that. Or if you want to beef it up, and I do this routinely, where I will type in my title, you know, kind of treat it like a headline. And in order to catch people's eyes and interest out the gate, and then I'll go back and edit that section and kind of, you know, beef it up a little bit from the standpoint of what's in it for them. So like this morning, my my strategy or my title was, you know, three top tips on how to get in front of more of your Facebook fans using video. That's exactly the ty- topic we're talk- talking about <laughs> yes, today. Yes, perfect timing. And so I haven't gone back and edited that yet, but I probably will before the day is over and just, you know, maybe put my three strategies that I popped in there. I might put those in the, the text. There's different strategies behind that, but I guess the short answer is to really treat that like a headline. What is going to get people's interest? Similarly to what we do with great blog titles, it's exactly the same thing. You've got to catch people's interest. People have to know what's in it for them. If you're just being random, then you're randomly going to get people checking it out. That's kind of my strategy. (laughs) So true. Okay. So what do you think about, I haven't even tried this yet, but what do you think about the fact that when you're going live, you actually put something like join me live now, colon, and then three ways to use video on Facebook or whatever it might be. And then after it's live, go back in there and change it around. Do you think saying that you're live at that moment makes a difference? I've seen a lot of people playing with the graphics. So this kind of speaks to the second part of your question. So I'm going to kind of go there and then circle back a little bit. But you can actually go in, you know, how sometimes with YouTube or any video where they randomly choose the screen photo, you know, the one that yeah. your face like in this weird position. Uh, yes, I know, know it all too well. Like a barracuda or something. <laughs> <you know? laughs> and so you have this horrible look on your, your face. Your eyes are closed routinely. Anyway, yes. the neat part about Facebook Live is you can actually go in and upload your own cover. So after the fact, you can go in and have a cover that has the title of your broadcast on it, or you could have some calls to action on that title. So a lot of times I've seen people do, you know, something that has like maybe a lower third on there to where it shows the person and then maybe the website or a a specific call to action, click to go or, you know, anything. So to go back to that point originally where you could edit, not only can you edit the video itself, like the cover, you can actually edit the text. So let's say, for example, part of your strategy was to drive people to an opt-in page. You were giving away something and you you were using that live broadcast to share some of the tips that's in that freemium. You could actually go back and incorporate the link into the actual description. So all people have to do is click on the link, you know, if they're watching it after the fact. So there's a lot of core strategies that you can incorporate with the editing functionality that Facebook gives us that we, like I say, we don't necessarily have on Periscope. Yeah. One of the first things I always do is go in there and they give you like 10 options of what frame they took from you talking. So I just try to find the one where I don't look like a total crazy person talking in the video. So I haven't even started to upload maybe images, which I like that idea with maybe the title of it or whatever, but definitely go in there right away and change your image if you look kind of crazy, which they tend to find the best ones to do that. I don't know how they I know. That. Kills me every time. There's also the opportunity to add a call to action okay, button. Okay, that was my on- next question. So you can yes. you can add a call to action button on that post. Like you don't have to boost it or anything. Yes. Okay. So your just the call to action buttons are, you know, no button obviously can be that's the default. You can have a book now, download, learn more, shop now, sign up, watch more. So those are pretty decent calls to action that you can actually overlay onto the video by simply going in and editing what you want to put on there. And you can also, this requires a little bit more of a skill set, but you can actually upload video captions as well. So you can upload what they call SRTs. And I haven't played with this feature yet, but I've seen some people do so. It's on my my list, but yeah. I just thought I'd mention it. It is more of an advanced feature. 
Okay. So you can possibly do those captions, which is kind of cool. I meant to ask you before I even asked you this question. So backing up a little bit. So now you're doing a daily show, but for me, let's say if I want to do it twice a week and I don't yet want to say the day and time I'm doing it, I do see the value in that. I like that people expect that I jump on my podcast once a week on Thursdays. They know it's going to go live. I see the value there, but if I'm not there yet, do you think that I should be warning people that I'm going to be live? And if so, how much of a warning do I give them? Well, I think, you know, if you have a regular show, there is that consistency, obviously, and people know when to expect you on live. But I personally think you could, you, you should, not only could you, but you should leverage your other social platforms to let people know, or, and even your list. So I think this is big. So for example, if you are going to be on Periscope or on Facebook, and specifically since we're talking Facebook Live, let's say you are going to do what kind of like a a really great, you feel like it's going to be a really great training and you want as many people as you possibly can to be there. You can let people know in advance, even a day or two before, similarly to what you would do with a webinar. I don't think you need to do like two weeks, right. but maybe like a day or two in advance, you can start to see the message that you're going to be on Facebook Live at a certain time. And then let your list know that you're going to be on Facebook Live. So let me share a really cool strategy with you. This was something that someone did on Periscope, but there is no reason that it wouldn't work exactly the same way on Facebook Live. I know someone who has a coaching program. She is a personal, uh, she's a life coach specifically, and she didn't have a major social media presence, but she had a list of about 10,000 people. So she wanted to test this whole, you know, live streaming opportunity when it kind of hit big. And it was about July or August, I think, of last year when she decided to implement this strategy. And her strategy was to commit to 30 days of getting on Periscope and giving a nugget, you know, something that was beneficial to her ideal client, her ideal customer avatar. And then she's like, okay, well, how am I going to get people on it? Because I, I'm just starting on Periscope. I don't have a bunch of followers. So how am I going to get people to watch my scopes? And she decided to leverage her list. So every day she would email her list and let them know, guys, I'm going to be on Periscope at this time. And it was a, the same time every day. But the strategy was to let them know that she was going to be there. And this is what she was going to be talking about. And come join me. She had a coaching program that she shared at the end of every one of her broadcasts. You know, if you guys are interested, if this is value-based to you, check out my coaching program. It wasn't super salesy. Literally, she's like, go check it out. She sold $71, packages. What? $15,000 packages? $15,000 was her coaching program, and she sold 71 of them. Wow. <sighs> I mean, if that's so, not enough to at least pique someone's interest to at least experiment with this live thing, then I don't know what is. I'm telling you, I mean, I have a note, my own monetization. I, it's literally added multiple six figures to my business. And one in particular, I'll share the story real quick. I did a product launch on Periscope in July of last year. I literally got on, shared the problem. I sympathized with the problem because I had the problem. And I said, I've got the outline. I built the training for this to solve this problem. Here's where you go buy it. And I had a 53% conversion. I had 247 people on that scope (laughs) and created five figures in sales in 12 minutes. Wow. I mean, I really do. This is such a perfect place to wrap up because I really do believe that this whole thing with live and people see you and it's not the most perfect setting all the time, but they get the real you and you're showing up consistently. I'm pretty sure that consistency is the name of the game here because we had Zach Spuckler on a while ago. He does it every single day. You're here to say that you've been doing it every single day on Periscope and now you're doing it daily, Monday through Friday on Facebook live. I do think the consistency is a big piece of the puzzle, but wow, when people see you show up over and over again, there has got to be a direct correlation with your sales. There's no doubt about it. Absolutely. And I think that no, like I said before, that no like and trust factor is built at a super accelerated rate. And in some cases, people know within, you know, five minutes, maybe less, whether they they like you, yes. you know, then they get to know you and then they're willing to spend money with you. 
it's just it's just really incredible how quickly that process happens compared to our traditional social media route. You know, we have to get on social media and I usually tell my clients, listen, you know, you have six to nine months before you can really start to see a return. And because we, you know, we have to get out there, we have to show show up every day and, and you know, build that rapport. But with, so, with this live video element, it just builds that at what it takes that that time shaves that time down to in minutes in some cases yeah i definitely agree this is definitely something that you've got to at least explore i mean i was watching the video you did this morning and you were saying if you're not using live video yet we've got to find a way for you to take that leap and start using it because this is something that's not going away i feel like it's only getting better and i'm the first to say i don't jump on the bandwagon right away i am not an early adopter i wish i was i just it's not part of my personality i've sat back enough to watch this and realized wait a second This is something that I cannot ignore and I have to let go of my insecurities and fear of being live on video and hating the way I look when I show up live sometimes. That's just part of the game for some of us. We have to get beyond that if we genuinely want to connect with our audience at an entirely new, different way that just hasn't been done before until now. I totally agree. And that's one of the reasons that I am so passionate about it because I am seeing so many people do amazing things and do so in a way that, you know, because lots of times people will say, well, wow, you're Kim or you're Amy, right? So you already have right. an right. audience. I've seen people start from scratch and do amazing things with live video. So that's what's exciting for me because I know how long it's taken me to build my platform. Amy, you know how long mm-hmm. it's taken your business and to see someone, you know, shorten that and take the opportunity that live video presents to them and monetize at like this rate that's like unheard of. That's exciting for me. I mean, that's why we do what we do. And when we can see a business owner embrace a resource like this and create amazing results with it, I'm just like, amazed at that. I I've seen what it's done for my business, but I've seen what it's doing for other people's businesses. And that's why I'm like, please, please at least explore it, you know, <laughs> get over that cur- get over that. Cause I was there. I know how it is. So I'm always constantly just saying just similarly to what I, how I shared with you at social media marketing world. Just do it. Just get out there, push yourself beyond those those limitations that you feel like you have, they're not truly there. You can do this. If Kim and I can do this, really, truly, we believe that you all can do it as well. Kim, I cannot thank you enough for coming on the show. I've wanted you on for a while now. And then I thought this is the perfect topic because you're killing it with live streaming video. So thank you so much. And tell my audience where they can learn more about you, where they can see you live, give any links that you can give them so they can check you out. Absolutely. Well, on Periscope, it's periscope.tv forward slash Kim Garst. My blog is kimgarst.com forward slash blog. Facebook, um, you can check me out there. I'm going to be on Facebook Live every day. And you can check me out on my fan page, which is facebook.com forward slash Kim Garst Boom Social. And I'll make sure to link to all of that on my show notes. And I'm going to link to your really awesome freebie all about Facebook engagement. I know that's not really what the show is about, but it's so freaking good that I've just got to get it on my show notes. So we'll link to that as well. So people can opt in and get the goodness there. So again, thanks a bunch for being here. So excited. Thank you for having me. So there you have it. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to all things Facebook live with Kim Garst. And remember the challenge that I gave you at the very beginning. If you haven't used Facebook live yet, I want you to mark your calendar and do it in the next seven days. So in the next seven days, you're going to either jump inside one of your Facebook groups or go right for your Facebook page. Click that little wireless looking broadcast icon inside your post. So it's really easy to find. Click on it. It will count down three, two, one. And you, my friend, are live. Just do it. Even if you're scared, do it anyway. So I can't wait to hear about all of your Facebook live experiences. So please do keep me updated. And one more thing before we wrap up, don't forget to take me up on the special fresh books offer. If you are a freelancer, a coach, or a consultant, fresh books is ridiculously easy cloud accounting software 
that will help you feel a whole lot less stressed when dealing with invoicing, running down late payments, and expense tracking. So to experience the full power of FreshBooks, totally free for 30 days, go to freshbooks.com forward slash Amy, and then enter Amy in the how did you hear about a section. I can't wait for you to check it out. Okay, so I want to give you a little teaser for next week's episode. And next week is all about looking at the legal stuff inside your business. Like, do you have a privacy policy, a disclaimer policy? Are you protected when you take money online? I know it's not the most sexy stuff to talk about. It's actually a little scary for most of us, but I have a special guest, a lawyer, in fact, to come on the show and talk to us about how to protect your online business. So that will be next week's episode number 112. I'll see you there. Thanks for listening to the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast at www.amyporterfield.com. 